Hallelujah, everyone. I'd like to start off with Psalms 91 for meditation of the week. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Just as it is written here in Psalms 91, God has appointed an angel in, unto each and every children of his. So you do not need to fear, no need to worry. He has one every, every day, day and night, watching each and every one of us. Wherever we go, whatever we may do, God has appointed an angel each, to each and every one of his children. If you believe this, if you read this with your lips, read the Bible and then believe it, the faith that God gave you will grow. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, as we prepare our hearts to hear your word today, we pray for your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to open our eyes and our ears to receive your word. May each and every one of the listeners gain wisdom and understanding of the truth, the truth of Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. This week's word title is The Mystery of Kingdom of Heaven Taken by Violence for the Past 2,000 Years. The message comes from Matthew chapter 11, Verses 11 through 15. I'll go ahead and uh, read it aloud. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. The title of this week's message may seem unfamiliar and a nonsense to those who have studied the revised version of Word of God. 
Perhaps it is because the revised version says that the kingdom of heaven is occupied by those who invade. The reason for this misunderstanding or refutation is due to the wrong concept of the word kingdom of heaven. The word kingdom of heaven does not mean heaven itself. In other words, it does not mean the third heaven. Where the regenerated Christians go in the future. So then, what is the kingdom of heaven? And why the kingdom of heaven has been taken by violence over the past 2,000 years? In the books of gospel, most Christians are familiar with the gospel of Matthew written about Jesus, who came as the king of the Jews. It should be noted, however, that Jesus, who came as the king of the Jews, said, in Matthew 11, verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist, until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. God foretold of Jesus through the prophet Isaiah about 700 years before the coming of the king of the Jews, that the kingdom of heaven would come to the land of Judea. In addition, when the kingdom of heaven would come through Jesus Christ, John the Baptist would prepare the way of the Lord. He also said that the purpose of bringing the kingdom of heaven to the land of Judea is to comfort the people of Israel by God, remembering that they received double for all their sins. It is written in Isaiah 40, 1 and 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. He also prophesies that someone who prepares the way of the Lord that is their comforter, the king of the Jews, would cry out, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah 40, verse 3 through 5. When the time had come to pass, the sound of the one that cried out in the wilderness appeared in the Judean wilderness. John the Baptist. As Jesus said, that he was the largest man born of woman, appeared and cried out in Matthew 3, 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist said, The kingdom of heaven, it's very close. Matthew testified that John the Baptist was the very one prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. In Matthew 3.3, 3, For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist ended his ministry and was beheaded by Herod. Right after he died, Jesus cried of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 4.17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
The kingdom of heaven spoken by John the Baptist and Jesus is the heavenly kingdom in the third heaven. But the kingdom of heaven came to the land of the Jews, who were without kings for hundreds of years when Jesus, the Jewish king from heaven, came to Judea from heaven. But neither the Jews received Jesus as their king, nor recognized him as their king, but they ordained the Roman Caesar as their king. They crucified Jesus on the cross, forming a gang with the religious leaders such as Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. Since then, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by force violently, and, and the kingdom of heaven disappeared. It is the way of the it is the way for the age of church that has begun through the kingdom of God within the believers of Jesus Christ for the last two thousand years. Apostle John testified beforehand that the kingdom of God, the invisible spiritual kingdom, would come upon believers through the Holy Spirit who believe in Jesus Christ, who died and rose for the sin of the world after the kingdom of heaven was taken by violence. He says this in John 1, 9-13, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Satan, the devil that through his servants killed the king of heaven and took the kingdom of heaven by violence. He is still ruling the world, also, also deceiving the world as the kingdom of heaven. Satan made Roman Catholic as his bride, ruling over the invisible church of God under his hands and created a Christendom that looked beautiful to the eyes of carnal Christians. He has been persecuting the bride of Christ, that is the true churches of God that believe in Jesus Christ, for the past 2,000 years, making the Pope as the vicar of Christ. Finally, even the churches of God have been deceived, and the Catholic Church has brought them into their hands, and all the religions as well as the churches of God, have already been integrated. They're going to make it official for their scheme through signing the treaty in the Peace Palace at The Hague, Netherlands on June 23, 2020. It is a matter of time before they emerge into the New World Order to prevent the Kingdom of Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords reigning on the earth. However, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, he will, place, he will place his throne in Jerusalem, in Judea, and finally take back the kingdom of heaven. Jesus foretold that after his death, when Satan would create a fake Christendom, world using Roman Catholics, and the, myster and the mysterious things that would appear as the kingdom of heaven on earth would appear. He said this is a mystery of the kingdom of heaven. The typical mysteries of kingdom of heaven are the parable of the sowing, the parable of the mustard seed, and the parable of the leaven hidden in the three measures of meal. 
Jesus said that the mysteries of kingdom of heaven were only allowed to be known to the disciples. He said this in Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said, to, said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. When Jesus explained to the disciples the parable of the sowing, Matthew thirteen nineteen. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. So then what is the word of the kingdom? It is the gospel that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again and establish, establishes his kingdom in the land of Israel. This is the kingdom that has been taken by violent force. This is the word for Christ's millennial kingdom. According to the Lord's word, most people's hearts are on the wayside of the road, so they cannot realize it or cannot withstand the persecution and also judged as heretics. Second, the parable of the mustard seed that we know well. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Matthew thirteen. 31 and 32. Most seminaries today misinterpret this parable as the church growing so large that many people gather to form a mega church. But if we remember that Jesus said that the bird in the parable is the devil, it refers to the so called Christian community created by Satan who deceives people by gathering in a church and forming a megachurch-like flock of birds. Another parable the Lord said, Matthew thirteen thirty-three. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which, is, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. When the Lord spoke to the disciples about leaven, he told them to watch out for the teaching of the Pharisees and scribes. In Matthew 16, 6, 11 and 12, he said, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. The leaven's like, uh, I guess modern day we call it, yeast right when you bake bread you put a little bit of that yeast under the flour mixture and then you bake it it just blows up uh, the Pharisees were so into upholding Jewish traditions and then meanwhile Sadducees did not believe in resurrection uh, back to verse 11 how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So doctrine, think of it as a backbone, like your spine. You can have the healthiest skin, healthiest body, and all the organs, but if you have if you don't have a good foundation, if you have a weak backbone, it's all useless. It's all just going to fall away and just crumble away, right? You have to have a strong back, a good foundation, a correct foundation. 
most importantly. Apostle Paul warned that in the last days, many false teachers, such as the Pharisees and Sadducees, would mislead the false doctrines of leaven. He mentioned about them in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So as I was preparing the message this week, um, this came to mind. Any of you guys see your, I guess, some churches will call it reverend, right? Instead of pastor? And does your reverend like wear a long robe and look a lot like Catholic priests? Okay. So I just want to make it clear when you're a saved Christian, we're all serving Jesus Christ. There's nobody higher in rank wise or lower. As Church of Christ, we're all members, like bodily part members, of one church, one body, the Bride of Christ. So some, some of us could be eyes, some of us could be like a right hand or left foot or right kneecap and so forth. Because eyes not greater than nose or, you know, you got to have hair too. And every member is precious, right? Otherwise, in this world, we call it handicapped. If you're missing a limb, you're kind of limited in what you can do. So anyway, I just want to say in, in simpler terms, a reverend is not really a term meant for somebody that is um, feeding, feeding the gospel, feeding the Bible, um, the word of God unto the church members. It's just a... Because once I once I'm not doing once outside of the podcast, I'm just like everybody else. You know, I'm I'm nobody greater. I'm no I'm nothing. You know, Christian, Christ, I am nothing. It's all about Him, not me. So when there are reverends, or like in the Jewish times, uh, even today the rabbis. They're using that term and the, the self-gain respect to fill their own bellies, be it money or um, food or anything that can be given. You know, it, they're giving it to him because of their quote-unquote respect. When the only respect you should give um, and serving is Jesus Christ. So if we look also into Bible, um, it's a well-known, it's a well-known scene, well-known verses. When Jesus Christ resurrected and, you know, he came out to, he pulled uh, Simon Peter aside and said, he asked him three times, right? Of the same question, Simon Peter, do you love me? And three times Simon Peter answered, of course, you know, I love you, Lord. So what did Jesus tell him three times? Feed my sheep. So what is he supposed to feed him? The gospel, right? The word of God. That's all preachers got to do. Just meditate in the word, the Bible, daily and ask for understanding and the wisdom that can only be given by Holy Spirit. And to go find and search 
and to preach those who don't know and who hasn't still believed in Jesus Christ. That in this current state, you're going to hell for not believing in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. That's the only homework he gave to Simon Peter. Out of all the disciples, he told him personally. And of course, the Catholics have to twist this verse in Matthew 16, 18 and said, when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Well, that rock is Jesus Christ. Peter is a, just like a pebble stone, a little rock, a little throwing rock, stone, if you will, a little piece. Whereas Jesus Christ is a big rock. So why are there so many of these mega churches and so many evangelists and um, pastors and preachers uh, among the mega churches? Well, it's for their own belly. They're, it, it's in one word, it's greed. They're using God's name. Jesus' name in vain. So if you look in, if we look in Matthew 6, what does Jesus say to his disciples? He said, But seek ye first kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, Father God knows well, well before what his children needs in advance way before we can even imagine. So, he will add you all these things of the worldly things, you know, be it bills or money or whatever, just go out and preach. That's all you need to focus on. If you worry about, oh, what am I gonna do tomorrow? What am I gonna eat? What am I supposed to drink? Oh man, what am I going to pack for lunch? No, it's don't let the worldly things get in your way. It's know, know each and every Bible verse and you have to keep it in your heart. So when I pray about un getting understanding and wisdom, like he gave Solomon in the Old Testament, that was a really big inspiration for me. When I pray, I ask for wisdom and understanding of the, the King James Bible. Because what did God give King Solomon? Oh, that's a good prayer. You seek wisdom and understanding. So I will give you riches. So was Solomon not the greatest king ever? The wisest? Well, that there's proof right there. Seek ye first kingdom of God and in his righteousness. Another Bible verse came to mind when um, earlier we mentioned from 2 Timothy about false teachers having itching ears. Um, itching ears meaning, oh, I want to hear what you know, only what I want to hear. Filtering, basically just cherry picking of the Bible verses. No, I don't want to hear this because it's too harsh. You know, you, you feel guilt. You feel, you feel that stab wound in your heart, in your conscience, because I guess it hurts you. You don't like it, so you just kind of ignore it and throw it behind you. Well, you can't pick and choose Bible verses. So if we skip to, let's turn to 2 Corinthians eleven three. This is Paul. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 
For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, look at that, another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, oh my, not the Holy Spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, another gospel other than the one that we're taught? Hmm. Which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So what is the gospel that we know and that we believe? Not only is this is it the gospel, but this is the correct doctrine. Check this out in Corinthians, first Corinthians fifteen fifteen three. Actually, let's do 15, 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Okay, here comes the most important part. For I delivered unto you the first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, um, Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 11, 6. We're going to go back to 2 Corinthians. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. But though I be rude in speech. Basically, he's not tickling your ears. It could be harsh. His speech, his, his uh, preaching method could be harsh. But in God's way, uh, God's eyes, you can be kind of rough on the edges when you speak. But if it's the gospel and if it's according to the Bible, that's all that matters. Because it will strike the heart of a man that's not believing in Jesus Christ. A sinful man, he will receive and he will just crumble down. Amen? The millennial kingdom of Christ was postponed for a moment by taking the kingdom of heaven by force that had come to the land of Israel 2,000 years ago by those who used violence. But God has brought forth the kingdom of God in Christians and will soon come back with them, who is the bride of Christ. He will establish the kingdom and restore the kingdom of heaven for the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings to all of you, and may the grace and knowledge of truth of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, be with you all. Amen.